Joining us now, Fox News Senior Strategic Analyst General Jack King. General, thank you for joining us. Is this hypersonic missile a significant development? Uh, well, certainly the first time it's ever been used uh, in a war, so that, that's significant of itself. But as a weapon system, uh, in terms of the kind of warhead it carries, the warhead isn't that much different from some of the cruise missiles and the other missiles that the Russians are using. What's very different about this system, it's, it's orbital, and, and it can travel the Earth's atmosphere at supersonic speeds, five times the speed of sound, and it's, and it's very difficult to intercept it and very difficult to defeat it because it's so maneuverable. So it doesn't really add anything to the war, to be frank about it, uh, <clears throat> because the warhead isn't, isn't that much different than the other warheads that are being used. All right. I think one question on the minds of viewers is, what is the U.S. sending to Ukraine? So can you tell us about the weaponry, the singers, the javelins, other things we are sending to help Ukraine? Yeah, well, what's happening in Ukraine, certainly, is that the arms that they are receiving are truly helping them. The fact is, the ground war is stalemated uh, in the northern campaign in, in Kyiv and Kharkiv. The Russians have not been able to generate any momentum going forward, and, and they've reached what we refer to in the military as a culminating point, and they're actually digging defensive positions. Uh, because they've reached that point. So the ground campaign with the anti-tank weapons, the artillery, the ammunition that uh, NATO and the United States have been providing is certainly helping. It is decisive. They're supporting motorized brigade units that are defending against the Russians. The, the air war still favors the Russians, and that's why the Stingers, uh, they are uh, low-level defense, air defense systems, but the SAMs, uh, surface-to-air missiles, they're much longer range, Trey, and they are definitely needed, and, and when they're employed, they're very helpful. At the Battle of Kyiv, just within the last uh, two to three days, the, the air defense systems of the Ukrainians have helped keep a lot of the bombardment off of that city. Some of it has gotten through, but a lot of it hasn't. It can defeat missiles coming in from Russia, where, where they're being fired, and also they can obviously defeat aircraft that are flying as well. So the air defense systems that the Ukrainians are requesting, NATO and the United States have got to keep those weapons coming. I do believe, Trey, that they should still give them the Polish uh, MiGs that Poland was intending to give them, and we had this snafu. Let's resolve that this week at the NATO meeting when President Biden gets there and get these fighters in their hands. I, I, I don't. It, it seems arrogant to me that we're we're telling the Ukrainians what they need. They're asking for that weapon system, and we shouldn't split the difference on whether that's an offensive or, or defensive weapon system. That's nonsense. The Russians have invaded Ukraine. Every weapon that the Ukrainians are using is a defensive weapon system, and that's just the facts of it. And we should get that, that additional fighter aircraft in there, because it, it will material help. The air war is fa favors the Russians, as I said, and we've got to bring that in, into balance. And certainly, there's other types of ammunition that are, that are being used at a much lower level in terms of small arms ammunitions and protective vests and the like. But the thing is, this is going to be a long war. The Russians have put out now, just within the last 24 hours, they're telling their people and their leaders, prepare for a long war in Ukraine. And that means the sustainment of the arms and munitions will be critical to Ukraine's success. And our, our mission should be to help the Ukrainians win this war and drive the Russians out. That should be our focus. Our focus isn't preventing World War III or an expansion of the war. That's a secondary issue. The primary issue is help the Ukrainians achieve a victory here against the Russians, and we have to be all in to be able to do that. And it's going to go on for weeks and possibly months. Like a good general, you anticipated my last question, which is how long will this last? And you say it could go on for a while. General Jack King, thank you for your service to our country, and thank you for joining us on a Sunday night. Yeah, great talking to you, Trey. Thank you.